Good evening, and thank you all for tuning in to support Paul's Place. My name is Susan Owens. I have had the privilege of serving on the board of directors at Paul's Place for four years, the last two as board president. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to learn more about Paul's Place and to support the critical work Paul's Place does in Southwest Baltimore. As we all know, the last 12 months have been incredibly difficult, but the setbacks created by the pandemic have only strengthened the commitment of Paul's Place to improve the quality of life in the communities of Southwest Baltimore. From moving our hot lunch program, the marketplace and case management services curbside to establishing an encampment outreach program to meet people where they are, the staff has been creative and has adapted to ensure help is available. In addition, and quite remarkably, the newest program of Paul's Place, the Culinary Arts Training Program, continued on the path to completion during the pandemic, and tonight, you will get a taste of this new venture. So again, thank you for tuning in, and a huge thank you to our corporate sponsors this evening. We are grateful to have so many with us in this work. In the summer of 1982, two volunteers from St. John's Episcopal Church in Glendon, Helen Martine and Reverend Philip Roulette, approached Reverend Edward Stoop of St. Paul the Apostle Church on Washington Boulevard with their vision, a soup kitchen in one of the poorest communities in Baltimore City and the nation Washington Village Pig Town. That September, Paul's Place began serving soup and sandwiches twice weekly. Over the years, we have added a nurse's clinic, case management, after school and summer programming, and peer recovery programs. Our neighbors are facing immense challenges. And at Paul's Place, we know what perseverance and resilience looks like because we see it in our guests every day. As the COVID-19 pandemic grew, the staff of Paul's Place worried about our guests and about the new community members coming to Southwest Baltimore. The concern sparked creativity and our staff got to work. In a short time, Paul's Place adapted, offering services and support curbside. To meet our neighbors where they are, Paul's Place also expanded outreach efforts, providing basic health care, food, and toiletry kits to nearby encampments. What you have just heard tells you why my family and I have been involved with Paul's Place. As the now Vice President of the Board of Directors, I invite you to notice how every staff member at Paul's Place deliberately approaches every person coming to Paul's Place as a human being first, deserving of respect and dignity. The circumstances they bring with them do not define who they are, but do describe where they find themselves whether seeking a meal, an ID, recovery, housing, or employment, respect and dignity of the person is at the core of the work. Food has really acted as a thread tying together our guests, staff, volunteers, and donors for nearly 40 years. So when we thought about how we could be the most helpful now and what our hope for Southwest Baltimore's future is, we started at the place from which we have always started, our neighbors. To remove barriers and to make it possible for a person to become self-sufficient and confidently build a future not previously imagined became our reason for persevering through the pandemic. Thanks to the support and encouragement we have received, I am extremely happy to introduce all of you to Groundwork Kitchen. We are excited to give you a sneak peek this evening of our new building, but more importantly, to give you a sneak peek of the program for which this building was constructed. Thank you to our sponsors for making this evening and the work we do possible.
Now I would like to introduce you to three key members of our staff, Dominique Charles and Mike Wilhelm. Make sure that healthy meals are created for our guests five days a week. And we are very excited to welcome Kimberly Triplett, who has just joined us as the executive chef for Groundwork Kitchen. Please enjoy their take on a Baltimore classic with a twist. Enjoy the rest of the evening and be sure to visit us soon. Thank you, Bill. I'm happy to be here with my colleagues. Today we are training on and developing our craft cake for Groundworks. Uh, we have an ingredient board here with a list of ingredients. We start with eggs, mayonnaise, breadcrumbs, Worcestershire, Old Bay, black pepper, Dijon mustard, some parsley, and a dash of Tabasco. Tabasco. We have our lump crab meat here. All these ingredients minus the tomato is in here. So we're going to mix it together. We're gonna to break up the crab meat first. We have everything measured out. So it's one pound of crab meat. So we're gonna mix this. And I Thank you, Mike. The breadcrumbs here, which have been measured out. Think, nope, they're already mixed. That's already mixed. Thank you. Yeah, we're already mixed it. We want to gently fold in the crab meat to where it's evenly mixed. We give a generous portion for a crab cake. So you want to turn on the pan, the saute pan, and we're going to pan sear our crab cakes four minutes each side till we get a nice crust. We're gonna form it. We would let this chill for an hour before searing it or in the pan or broiling it. We'll get about four, five ounce crab cakes out of a pound. Right, yeah. Okay, all right. So we have a crab cakes formed. They chilled for an hour in the refrigerator, they get nice and cold. We have a little bit of olive oil, get the pan hot. We're gonna pan sear them four minutes each side and finish them off in the oven at 350 degrees for a few more minutes. And you wanna hear, you wanna hear it sizzling and that'll help with a nice sear. And when you see the edges of the crab cake start turning brown, that's a good sign that you've got your sear, and then you want to flip it over. Okay. All right. Another a few minutes, and then we'll put it in the oven. We'll put it on top. So this is our finished crab cake that were seared. We put in the oven. They were finished in eight minutes. It's served on a bed of arugula lettuce with a garlic lemon aioli, or you can get it on a toasted bun with the uh, aioli arugula and a sliced tomato. It can be served either way. And we look forward to welcoming everyone at Groundworks very soon. Thanks so much, Kimberly, Mike, and Dominique for the great and the fun instruction. Well done. My name is Jason Goger. I joined the board a couple years ago at the suggestion of a colleague of mine. I work at STX, which is a neighbor and a longtime supporter of Paul's Place. And we're all grateful at STX for the partnership. So far this evening, you've learned about Paul's Place, our history, how we've adapted during the pandemic, and how truly excited we are for the opportunity to be part of the workforce development efforts here in Baltimore. So now I invite you to join me in providing resources, support, and encouragement to individuals and families as they work to overcome barriers to self-sufficiency. Let's be clear here, the need in Southwest Baltimore remains great, but Paul's Place is determined to be here for our neighbors to help them meet their basic needs and forge their own path to success. Our goal here this evening is to raise $35,000 
to help children and adults in Southwest Baltimore fulfill their potential. Please consider how a gift tonight can make a significant impact on the lives in your community. For example, your gift of $6,500 ensures a student in our culinary training program has barrier-free access to our 13-week life-changing opportunity. Your gift of $5,000 can provide one-on-one -on -one case management for five adults. Your gift of $2,500 provides academic support for one student for an entire year. Your gift of $1,000 offers one day of healthy, hearty meals for 175 or more people, many of whom rely on Paul's Place for their only meal of the day. Your contribution of $500 delivers health screenings and medical case management for one adult with a chronic health condition. Your donation of $250 provides showers, laundry service, and free clothing for two adults experiencing homelessness. Your gift at any amount ensures that Paul's Place can continue the life-saving work it does in Southwest Baltimore. To make your gift, simply visit www.paulsplaceoutreach.org forward slash spring event 21. Thank you to all who are making our virtual event to raise funds and hope for Southwest Baltimore happen. In case you missed it, listen for the answers to these questions. Number one, in what year was Paul's Place founded? Number two, in what neighborhood is Paul's Place? Number three, why is Paul's Place a trusted member of the community? Number four, what did Paul's Place do during the pandemic? And number five, what is the newest program of Paul's Place? Thank you to our sponsors and to all those who have joined us to fund HOPE. To learn more and to make a gift, please visit the Paul's Place website at www.paulsplaceoutreach.org. We would like to thank you for your support. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your support of Paul's Place. Thank, thank you, you for, for your support. support.